She is not your typical Emirati, but she is smashing stereotypes one training session at a time. Today we meet Umaira Al Ulama, the founder of Alif Administration, which helps Emiratis develop their work ethic, their creativity, and of course their careers. But instead of having a typical interview in our studio, we decided why not have it at Kerak House over the perfect cup of Kerak tea. Kerak House is a local homegrown business in downtown Dubai. So let's go and meet Omeda. Downtown Dubai, where money, power, and success come alive in the space of two square kilometers. Join me as I dive into the world of fame and fortune in the heart of the city where business never sleeps. I'm Lubna Hamdan. Welcome to Greenback. So, Almeida, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You told me something hilarious before we started. So, I, I wanted to take you here, to bring you here to Karak House, because it's one of my favorite places and I'm obsessed with Karak tea. It's a very popular Emirati. Absolutely. You know, well, it's, it's Indian actually, but it's, it's very popular here true, in the UAE. True, true. But you are not the biggest fan of Karak tea, are you? <laughs> I am not, um, but I do, I must say, I love the presentation. I must say, I, I really love this restaurant. It's super beautiful, like it's really the ambiance. But um, yes, I am not a fan <laughs> of Karak tea. This is going great from the start. <laughs> it's going to be a great interview. Um, I can smell the saffron though, it's really nice. Like I, I, I think they went to a lot of trouble and I, I do believe it's, it's, you know, it's not an easy um, tea to prepare. Yeah. So I, I do appreciate the effort that goes into it. I'm just messing with you, don't yeah. worry. I, I like it enough for both of us. Okay, I'm obsessed that's with it. good. So I think my first question is, you're not the typical Emirati. No, I'm not. Do you get that a lot? I do. I do. Um, I spent a lot of my life in the U.S. and I studied criminology, which was something also not a lot of Emiratis were talking in my time. I mean, you know, um, in the 90s, nobody really studied those kind of uh, topics. You know, everything was in business or law or engineering. So, exactly. you know, somebody who was doing criminology, it was such a strange uh, major for a lot of uh, the families here. And when I came back to the UAE, everybody kind of was trying to place me in a box, you know, because they were like, what kind of Emirati will she be? And the thing is, is that I think no one should be placed in boxes. I think everybody has their uniqueness that they bring to the table. And I think that um, being one of the first Emirati women uh, to study criminology was something interesting as on its own. And you do something amazing as well. So you train Emiratis I do. to develop their work ethic, their creativity, and you help them develop their careers as well. Absolutely. How does that really work? Can you work us through the process? Say I'm an Emirati and I want to work with you. How does it work? So it first started in 2007 um, when I was sitting. Um, it was a really nice class. There was an instructor. He was from the US. And he was teaching um, this young group of Emiratis. And I watched them kind of glaze over, get bored, they weren't really listening. So I asked them a question, like when the instructor left, and I said like, why are you guys not interested? Like, the guy was really funny, like he said some really nice jokes, and what they told me was a kind of a shock in the beginning, but then I kind of understood what they meant. They were like, there's, there's no connection between that instructor and us. Like, yes, his jokes are funny, but we didn't grow up in the US, so we don't really understand, understand. his jokes. And they were like, and also he didn't take the time to understand our personalities, our culture, the differences, you know? He might have been a great instructor. So I thought, okay, maybe it's time for me to come out of the criminology. And, and at that time, I was doing a lot of criminology and f uh, fraud and risk management. I was working with Dubai Holding for a few years. And um, I was working with Sultan bin Sulaim's team, you know? So it was a lot of different um, companies based on for their fraud and these kind of sections. And I thought, maybe there's something I can add value. And it wasn't just for Emiratis. Um, it was also for expats who were born and raised in the UAE who identified okay. themselves as Emiratis. Me. Exactly. <laughs> you see, so, but, yeah. but all these young generations, they had something in common. They were so eager to learn, so eager to get out there, but yet the instructors weren't connecting to them. Sure. Which is why then we created um, Elif. Um, it's the first kind uh, training and development center that is 
for the Emiratis, by the Emiratis, and consists of people born and raised here. So we consider them of Emiratis. We all know that you, you know, companies here are encouraged to hire Emiratis. Yes. But what we don't talk about enough is how much they really have to offer. You know. Absolutely. Um, why should companies hire Emiratis? What do they have to offer? Well, one of the main things that I want everybody to focus on, and I've been saying this since 2010, don't hire Emiratis just because you want to hire Emiratis. You need to find the right Emirati for the right job. Yeah. And that's something that takes a lot of time and effort from all these recruitment agencies and from all these entities who just want to add numbers and quotas. And that's the worst thing you can do because what happens is you'll hire that Emirati, that Emirati in one or two years will hate his job, yeah. will jump from job to job, and you really haven't secured that. Has it changed? Has the, has the perception changed since you started Alif of Emiratis in, in the workplace? and? And, and have, have the new generation themselves change because we see so many yeah, entrepreneurs now absolutely. you know really creating these amazing concepts absolutely you know lots of things have changed but I think it's also a lot of companies have woken up to understanding that the things they were doing in the past were not working right just right. you know placing them in a, yeah. anywhere they could find yeah. like every single young Emirati high schooler was a teller yeah yeah, and sure. it just doesn't work. Yeah. There's a lot of, for me, the most hardest working uh, youth, whether they're Emirati or expats, born and raised here, are the ones who work and study at the same time. Sure. And for me, those are the ones that everybody should focus on. And sadly, yeah. people were never focusing on them. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And for me, those are the agreed. ones that, especially Northern Emirates, my favorite type of students. Really? Rasul Khayma, Ajman, Fajera. These people get up, at the crack of dawn, even earlier, like 4 a.m., they'll Amazing. get to my class by 7.30 before everybody. They'll be sitting there waiting for the day to start. Wow. They will work, they will go to university, they will come home, and they will help out in their families. Amazing. And I, this perception is one of the things that I always talk about when I talk to companies, when I talk to magazines, to TV shows, to understand it's not about lumping them as nationalities and we always say oh Emiratis are either lazy or they don't want to work or they're spoiled yeah there are there's so many because there's good and bad in every culture sure, sure exactly there are good and bad expats there are lazy there's you know it's it's nothing yeah. to do with that yeah. but it's a mistake of corporations that don't find the right Emirati for the right job and this is you know a lot of times we're so quick to blame um, the expats who don't want to hire Emiratis but it's never not really the case I've, okay. I've seen so many amazing expat managers who take the time to educate and train a national or a young expat youth who has the same kind of, you know, the differences and these kind of ways they deal with um, entitlement issues and, sure. and these kind of things. Sure. This is normal in, in any young generation. Yeah. Whereas I had so many times uh, Emirati managers who are like, oh my God, don't give me Emirati uh, employees. Really? And I'd be like, why? They'd be like, oh, they're lazy. And I said, have you tried them? Yeah. Do you know them? Do you yeah. know anything about them? Yeah. No, no, no. But, you know, I've had experience in the past. Well, everything is different. Yani. Exactly. No one is the same. And you're helping changing that. And I, I, I have such immense respect for you Thank for, for you. doing that. Um, you also help um, divorced and widowed women Absolutely. get back into the workforce. Yeah. How, how is that going? You know, is that also changing? Are they now more encouraged? You know, it, it was different back it then. It was very different. It's still very tough. Um, we have to be honest, we come from a culture, the whole GCC, the whole Arab nation comes from a culture where divorce is unheard of, it's not nice to have it, you're not sure. looked on as somebody successful if you've had, you know, and I think these things will take some time to change, but one of the things that we do is that we don't label a woman. If the only thing we do is help them gain financial independence, for them to make the choices that they can be happy, that they can live with. Sure. Whether it's leaving, staying, whatever, we don't get involved. We just give them that financial independence. So for example, we have some women who cannot leave their communities for whatever reason. They cannot sure. come and work in a place that is of mixed um, genders. And a lot of times they, they're stuck to the confinements of their little uh, you know, neighborhood or their little community. Sure. 
So what we do is we provide them computers, printers, textbooks, anything they need to work from home. Okay. And then they get paid based on that. And that, that encourages them to, Absolutely. to go for it. Absolutely. That's amazing. Brilliant. Yeah. I still remember this, um, this moment in, in school. I was in high school. And um, our teacher asked us to raise our hands if we wanted to um, go to university and then work after university. And so few of us raised yeah. our hands. And I was really shocked because I did not expect and it. And you're such a younger generation. I like, exactly. didn't expect that. You know, it was, and I will never forget that moment. It was years ago, but I will never forget it. I think now it has changed, hasn't it? Absolutely. I am one of those people who have the biggest respect for the youth. Honestly, like I have so many times I will hear from different people, you know, they're like, we're so over this younger generation, this TikTok and, and Snapchat. And, and I always have to remind them that in our time, our parents used to say that and our yeah. grandparents used to say that. Yeah. I have the biggest respect for your generation, for my children's generation, for every young generation. You guys are doing things that for us, it's baffling. You learn things, technology at a drop of the hat. Things that take you maybe 10 minutes, takes me maybe two days, three days. I'm not gonna lie, I'm very happy to be honest about these things. And this is one of the things that I always encourage companies when they say, we don't wanna hire them because they don't have experience. It's okay, sometimes life gives you experiences. Exactly. Sometimes a 14 year old can have more experience than a 40 year old. And a fresh perspective Absolutely. as well, right? An out of a box Absolutely. kind of, yeah. Absolutely. What advice would you give, you know, young um, Emiratis or, or even young expats yeah. who go, or, or, you know, any young Absolutely. girl really watching this interview? Be yourself, honestly. Like, every single thing you bring to the table is unique about you. Don't think like, okay, this person failed because they did this. Those failures define other people. It's the younger generation that I always tell them, it's okay to make mistakes. Yeah. You learn from them. And it's, I never ever feel that you know, you're demotivated because people keep saying, oh, you're always on your phone or you're always on. Maybe this is how you get your stimulation. Yeah, as sure. long as it's not something that is hindering to you or dangerous for you, I have no issues with these sure. things. I'm so happy to take a back seat. I feel there's nothing worse than my generation who come on and hold on to things when they should really let go. You're so candid, <laughs> you know, I love your honesty. Mm -hmm. I've really enjoyed this interview. Me too, I hope me you too. have as well. Absolutely. And um, I'm so proud of you and keep it up. Thank and you I so much. Wait. That means so much to and me. I cannot wait to see what Honestly, you guys do. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's not something you see every day. An Emirati that doesn't like correct tea. <laughs> but I think we made up for it with our fascinating conversation, which is what this show is all about. It's all about having fascinating conversations. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you would like to see more of and comment, like, and subscribe.